Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember that context is everything media network. Founder and CEO John Michaels reading a textbook cover to cover. Today we're actually starting a new chapter. So an exciting development there. We're on chapter 17 of this world history textbook that was copywritten in 2001. And now this chapter 17 is titled The Age of Absolutism from 1550 to 1800. The five sections are Extending Spanish Power, French under Louis XIV, Triumph of Parliament in England, Rise of Austria and Prussia, Absolute Monarchy in Russia. Section 1, Extending Spanish Power, here. Setting the scene. It is best to keep an eye on everything, Philip II of Spain often said, and he meant it. As king of the most powerful nation in Europe, he gave little time to pleasure. Instead, he plowed through a fountain of paperwork each day, making notes on ev even the most trivial matters. Once the Spanish ambassador to England wrote about the familiar kind of insect he had seen in London. Probably flies. Rather, probably fleas. Philip scribbled on a letter. Philip, Philip's determination to keep an eye on everything extended far beyond trivia. It helped him build Spain into a strong centralized state. By the late 1500s, he had, encountered, he had concentrated all power into his own hands. Over the next 200 years, other European monarchs would pursue similar goals. They often make reference to strong central power in this textbook, as noted there. Charles V and the Habsburg Empire. Habsburg, Habsburg Jaw. By the 1500s, Spain had sunken, had shaken off the feudal past and emerged as the first modern European power. Under Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, Spain had expelled the last Muslim rulers and enforced religious unity. In 1492, Isabella financed Columbus's voyage across the Atlantic, leading to Spanish conquest of the Americas. <clears throat> Wearing two crowns. In 1519, Charles V, grandson of Ferdinand and Isabella, inherited a huge empire. The new king faced nearly impossible challenge. He not only inherited the crown of Spain, but was also the heir to the Austrian Habsburgs. The sprawling Habsburg Empire included the Holy Roman Empire and the Netherlands. Holy Roman Empire, Germany? Pretty sure. Ruling two empires involved Charles in constant warfare. As a devout Catholic, he fought to suppress the Protestant movement in the German states. After years of religious warfare, however, Charles was forced to allow the German princes to choose their own religions. His greatest foe was the Ottoman Empire. Under Suleiman, Ottoman forces advanced across Central Europe to the walls of Vienna, Austria. Force, um, although Austria held firm, the Ottomans occupied much of Hungary. Ottoman naval forces also challenged Spanish power in the Mediterranean. An empire divided. Perhaps the Habsburg Empire was too scattered and, and diverse for any one person to rule. Exhausted and disillusioned, Charles V gave up his title and entered a monastery in 1556. He divided his empire, leaving the Habsburg lands in Central Europe to his brother, Ferdinand who became the Holy Roman Emperor. He gave Spain, the Netherlands, southern Italy, and Spain's overseas empire to his 29-year-old son, Philip. Philip II 
and divine right. Like his father, King Philip II was hardworking, devout, ambitious. During the 42-year reign, he sought to expand French, uh, Spanish influence, strengthen the Catholic Church, and make his own power absolute. Thanks in part to silver from the Americas, he made Spain the foremost power in Europe. Unlike many other merchant, uh, monarchs, Philip devoted much time to government work. He seldom hunted, never jousted, and lived in sparsely lived as sparsely as a monk. His isolated somber palace ousted Madrid outside Madrid reflected the king's character, known as the Escorial. It served as a church, a residence, and a tomb for members of the royal family. As did Ferdinand and Isabella, Philip further centralized royal power, making every part of the government responsible to him. He resigned, uh, rather, he reigned as an absolute monarch, a ruler with complete authority over the government, and lived in the lives of the people. Complete authority over the government and the lives of the people. Like other European rulers, Philip asserted that he ruled by divine right. That is, he believed that his authority to rule came directly from God. Partly as a result of the concept of divine right, Philip saw himself as a guardian of the Roman Catholic Church. The great undertaking of his life was to defend the Catholic Reformation and turn back the rising Protestant tide in Europe. Within his own lands, Philip enforced religious unity. He turned the Inquisition against Protestants and other people uh, thought to be heretics. The Wars of Philip II. Philip fought many wars as he attempted to advance Spanish Catholic power. At the Battle of Lepanto, in 1571, Spain and its Italian allies set, uh, soundly defeated an Ottoman fleet in the Mediterranean. Although Christians hailed as great victory, the Ottoman Empire remained a major power in the Mediterranean region. Revolt in the Netherlands During the last half of his reign, Philip battled Protestant rebels in the Netherlands. At the time, the region included 17 provinces that are today Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. It was the richest part of Philip's empire. Protestants in the Netherlands resisted Philip's efforts to crush their faith. Protestants and Catholics alike opposed high taxes and autocratic Spanish rule, which threatened local tradition of self-government. In the 1560s, riots against the Inquisition sparked a general uprising in the Netherlands. Savage fighting raged for decades. In 1581, the northern largely Protestant provinces declared their independence from Spain and became known as the Dutch Netherlands. They did not gain official recognition, however, until 1648. The southern mostly Catholic provinces of the Netherlands remained part of the Spanish Empire. Invading England By the 1580s, Philip saw England's Queen Elizabeth I as chief Protestant enemy. First secretly, then openly, Elizabeth had supported the Dutch against Spain. She even encouraged English captains, known as sea dogs, to plunder Spanish treasure ships. Francis Drake, the most daring sea dog, looted Spanish cities in the Americas. It's called the Ambient Classroom, so I'm reading it ambiently. Hence the yawn. I could read it with more energy, but I think I'm trying to do a little bit more subdued. See how it feels. Whatever. To Philip and his dismay, 
instead of punishing uh, punishing the pirates, Francis Drake, Sea Dog of England, Elizabeth made him a knight. To end English attacks and subdue the Dutch, Philip prepared a huge armada, or fleet, to carry a Spanish invasion force to England. In 1588, the armada sailed with more than 130 ships, 20,000 men, and 2,400 pieces of artillery. The Spanish were confident of victory. When we meet the English, predicted one Spanish commander, God will surely arrange matters so that we can grapple and board them, either by sending some strange freak of weather, or more likely just by depriving the English of their wits. The strange freak weather, however, favored the other side. In the English Channel, lumbered, lumbering Spanish ships took losses from the lighter, faster English ships. Suddenly a savage storm blew up, scattered the armada. After further disasters at sea, the tattered remnants limped home to Spain in defeat. While the defeated Spanish Armada ended Philip's plan to invade England, it had little short-term effect on his power. In the long term, however, Spain's naval superior, uh, superiority did dwindle. In the 1600s and 1700s, Dutch, English, and French fleets challenged and surpassed Spanish power both in Europe and around the world. Spain's golden age. Spain's golden age. The century from 1550 to 1650 is often called Spain's Siglo de Oro, or golden century, for the brilliance of its arts and literature. Philip II was a patron to the arts and also founded ac ac academies of science and mathematics. Painters. Among the famous painters of this period, contradictory name, was El Greco, meaning the Greek. Born in the Greek island of Crete, El Greco had studied the Renaissance from Italy before settling in Spain. He produced haunting religious pictures, dramatic views of the city of Toledo, and striking portraits of Spanish nobles done in a dramatically elongated style. El Greco and his use of vibrant colors influenced the work of Diego Velázquez, court painter to Philip IV. Velázquez is perhaps the best known for his vivid portraits of Spanish royalty. Writing. Spain's golden century produced outstanding writers like Lope de Vega. The, a peasant at birth, he wrote more than 1,500 plays, including witty comedies and action-packed romances. The Sheep Well, Lope de Vega shows. In The Sheep Well, Lope de Vega shows King Ferdinand Ferdin and Queen Isabella saving a village from the hands of villainous feudal lords. Miguel de Cervantes wrote Don Quixote, the first modern novel in Europe. It pokes fun at medieval tales of chivalry, dressed in rusty armor. The madman Don Quixote rides out on his broken down plow horse in search of adventure. He battles a windmill, which he thinks is a giant, and mistakes two flocks of sheep for opposing armies. Ha 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 He is accompanied by Sancho Panza, a practical-minded peasant. Don Quixote mocked the traditions of Spain's feudal past, yet Cervantes admired both the unromantic 
earthly realism of Sancho Panza and the foolish but heroic idealism of Don Quixote. In the last section of this section, economic decline. In the 1600s, Spanish power and prosperity slowly declined. Lack of strong leadership was one reason. The successor of Philip II, the successors of Philip II were far less able rulers than he. Economic problems were also greatly to blame. Costly overseas wars drained wealth out of Spain almost as fast as it came in. Then, too, treasure from the Americas led Spain to neglect farming and commerce. The government heavily taxed the small middle class, weakening a group that in other European nations supported royal power. The expulsion of Muslims and Jews from Spain deprived the economy of many skilled artisans and merchants. Finally, American gold and silver led to soaring inflation, with prices rising much higher in Spain than elsewhere in Europe. Even though Spain continued to rule a huge col colonial empire, its strength slipped away. By the late 1600s, France had replaced Spain as the most powerful European nation. That's all. If you enjoyed, if you got this far, please subscribe. Please like. Please leave a coin in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Enjoy the weather. It's beautiful out.